your thoughts on the session today up about 12 points a little bit disappointing given that we yeah. did see our SPY futures pointing to a 0.4% gain on the Aussie market and we gained 0.2%. I think part of that was the number of stocks trading ex-dividend on the market, including the likes of Woodside Petroleum, Worley Parsons, as well as Suncorp Netway. So that had an impact on the market. But one of the areas that did do well were food-related stocks. We saw mm. Select Harvest, Figo, as well as Gage Road all reaching either 52-week highs or all time record highs now these companies deal in almonds cheese as well as in beer um, so that was one theme on the market and of course the other bright spot were gold stocks we saw gold stocks rising after gold prices saw a significant lift in Asia as well as in New York on Friday Leah, kicking off with Caltech so it was a positive start at the open it certainly faded and we saw it close down I think in the end it was about uh, half a percent your thoughts on the numbers for Caltech today the numbers actually coming in line with expectations. Caltex was guiding for a profit result between $160 million to $175 million on a replacement cost basis, but it came in at $171 million. So in line with expectations, the Aussie dollar had a negative impact because of the fall that we saw in May and June, and Caltex goes out and buys its oil and it pays in US dollars. So the currency actually had a negative impact, the Aussie dollar falling. Now that was partially offset by our hedging benefits, so $46 million worth of hedging benefits, but the uh, loss due to currency was $85 million um, uh, be, uh, uh, before the hedging benefits are put in there. We also saw an unplanned outage in Brisbane as well as some of the premium uh, fuel being disrupted in Sydney because of a gas pipeline. But all in all, if you're investing in Caltex at the moment, really you're concentrating on the marketing business. Mm. And that's because we're going to see the shutdown of Kern the Kernel refinery. So there's going to be less implications in terms for currency moves because uh, the refining uh, business will have less of an impact. And instead, the focus really is going to be on the marketing business, which is Australian dollar dominated. I think if we have a look at uh, companies that do well once you know the, sh the, the actual business is struggling, we can point to companies like Blue Scope Steel and really what you want to see for a move in terms of the share price direction is something changing within the business and at the moment Boa Long Year's earnings are still trending downwards and the outlook is still negative. So you'd be buying into this stock once you thought the losses in this business were over and once you thought the tide was going to turn and we were going to start to see positive earnings growth coming into the business. As it is now his on a historical base, it's looking quite cheap, but of course looking forward, you're still expecting the company to make losses. So it's very difficult to buy into a proposition like that and I think that's why it's called a value trap. I think a company looks value when it's valued cheaply and yet there's going to be positive earnings momentum coming into the picture and that's certainly not the case with Boat Long Year. We have a look at the concern in this area. Utilisation has dropped down to 55% for the period that reported and that's compared to 70% for the previous corresponding period. Not only that but the picture actually looks to be worsening. So <laughs> once we've seen all the bad news being priced into this stock and we do see a more positive outlook for the company, I think that's the time to for the share price to be turning in a positive direction but for the time being the shares being hammered once again.